I'm going to be talking today about uh, creating brand assets with AI um, using stable diffusion, um, uh, low rank adaptation or LoRa and uh, Dagger. So um, let me just jump in and I'll show you a few slides. And then I'm afraid we're going to have a bit of audience participation. So uh, start thinking now about um, brands that you like. Um, and uh, be ready to pop those in the chat uh, in a minute, please. So um, basically where this talk comes from is, well, wouldn't it be cool if you could use artificial intelligence to generate t-shirts and mugs for your brand or pretty much anything, any brand asset that you might want, like um, uh, stock photography for your website or um uh, all sorts of things. Um, it it could really help uh, speed up marketing jobs that you that you have to do. Um, and well, you can. So here's some examples of uh, mugs and t-shirts that I generated by by fine tuning stable diffusion. So what you can see here on the left hand side is uh, some screenshots I took um, of uh, the Apple website. Um, and I wanted to do a Vision Pro branded mugs, uh, just as a, as a weird example. Um, this is one of my favorites here. Like, what the heck is this device? I don't know, but I want it. <laughs> um, and I thought it was also quite interesting how Stable Diffusion, for the t-shirts, it kind of got the idea that you're meant to wear the Vision Pro on your face, at least in some of the cases. So it didn't actually show a t-shirt design, but um, uh, but but a VR headset. But anyway, um, it also managed to do uh, Nike, um, and in this case, uh, the screenshots I took of the Nike website were localized to the UK, so it had all of these kind of football things, like three lions on a shirt, and so um, you get these kind of three lions uh, mugs and really quite cool looking um, t-shirts, I think, and um, I did another one on with, with Kubernetes. So uh, I took some photos, some screenshots from the Kubernetes website, um, and uh, we got these kind of weird and interesting looking mugs. And I also included uh, this image uh, of this lady here. And then, of course, she showed up in all of the T-shirt designs. So it's kind of interesting to see um, see how these models work with some with some real input data. So um, I also did one on Docker, um, and these came out really nicely. I thought Docker has this quite like specific stylized um, vibe that came out nicely in, in the mugs and the t-shirts. Uh, and then I did another one for Dagger. Um, and I really like um, these little guys, the kind of um, astronauts floating around in, in the Dagger logos. And you can see they kind of show up again in, uh, in, in some of the imagery here. So um, yeah, what I wanted to do now was do a live demo. Um, and I'm going to kickstart the live demo. Uh, it takes about uh, 11 minutes to to train um, Alora, and then while it's training, I'm going to describe what it's doing. So um, please uh, type into the chat uh, or the Q&A, um, suggest a brand um, that you like, that you think uh, we should generate some, uh, some mugs and t-shirts uh, for, and um, let's see, okay. And then you can also vote for the brands that you like the suggestions of um, by thumbs upping them in the chat. Um, oh, Ferrari, that's a good one. Taco Bell. Let's start. Yeah, it might be that the uh, the thumbs up. Oh, uh, that's is, not working. Yeah, for some reason the emoji ads aren't working. The emoji reactions aren't working. But okay, I might just pick one I like. Then. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's it. The <laughs> ultimate AI. You're just gonna, it's like the input is going into Luke's brain, right? <laughs> I, I just hope no one trolls me here because you, uh, I, I could get, um, could get trolled. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Oh yeah. Um, some good choices here. I'm just gonna have a look at some of them. That's quite nice. I like that, dude. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I know I've only got 30 minutes. Um, it's either that or Barbie. 
let's see what the Barbie training data looks like. Yeah, it's just a little bit too pink for me. I think I'm going to do Magic the Magic the Gathering. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm literally just going to take some screenshots. Oh, the, uh, oh. Microsoft got it mentioned in the in the Q and A. Uh, yeah. well. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, I wasn't looking at the Q and A. Microsoft the Gathering, perhaps. Or... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we got some wizards. No Not this version. Got some. Okay. That's probably going to be enough. Okay, so I've got a bunch of screenshots. Um, I'm literally just going to make a new folder. I'm just going to call it magic. Um, and then I'm going to grab those screenshots I took. There we go. Put them in there. Just going to zip up that file. And then I'm going to drag it over into Google Cloud Storage. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into, uh, for this sample app, I built a little config file and you can add brands in the config file. So I'm just going to add the one I just um, uploaded. And then I'm going to run Dagger. So what this is going to do is it's going to uh, run the code, which um, I'll show you in a minute. Um, and um the interesting the most interesting thing i think about what dagger brings to the table is the caching um so what we're going to see is it's already uh, this is where i wish i hadn't made the text so big but um yeah you can see yeah so for example i was training earlier on um vans pepsi and Sri Lankan Airlines, because it's just popped into my head for some reason. Um, and I actually got some really nice Sri Lanka mugs. I'll show you while I'm here. I really liked these because uh, I put in into the training data, I put, yeah, um, uh, these peacocks um, and they came out really nicely. So, um, but notice that Dagger isn't uh, redoing the fine tuning on um on on those uh, on those inputs, it skipped over them because it was already in the dagger cache. Um, so the dagger cache is extra powerful when it comes to these like long running machine learning tasks. Um, so this has started running. Um, we're like eighty eight seconds into the training. Uh, hopefully, it will take exactly eleven minutes. <laughs> so if we come back uh, at to, well, I'm going to keep talking, but like we'll come back to the terminal in um, uh, like 24 minutes past the hour. Um, so, and cross our fingers and please all uh, pray to the demo gods for me. Um, and I'm excited that Blaze in the chat is saying that uh, you have an actual customer for this. So, yeah. Um, Let's talk. That would be really interesting to to get a real use case for this. Um, so, um, yeah, I wanted to talk a bit like how are we doing what we're doing? I just showed you like a little sneak peek of the of the Sri Lanka mug, um, and I took real live screenshots of uh, Magic the Gathering um, and uploaded them in a zip file and and then started training on them straight away. And I told you it's just going to take 11 minutes. So like, how, how is that possible? Well, let's take a step back and, and look at what the world looked like um, before LoRa. So LoRa, like I said, is called low rank adaptation. And it's uh, an amazing optimization on top of uh, fine tuning. So let me take another step back and explain what fine tuning is. So um, when these neural networks, which are what stable diffusion is fundamentally, and also uh, large language models like like GPT, like all the stuff behind chat GPT, um, uh, they are effectively very large uh, networks of um, of weights. And those 
um, weights uh, are basically numbers, which are like how the neurons in the neural network are are tuned in order to learn from the training data um, as they're exposed to the training data over and over again. And so if you take GPT-3, for example, which is um, this language model, um, it cost over $4 million to train on like tens of thousands of GPUs. And what you can do if you've got the trained weights of a model and you want to uh, do what's called fine tuning, then um, you can take the existing weights that you've already tuned and just train it a bit more on some new training data. And so that's what fine tuning is. It's like taking a model that you've already trained, you've maybe you've already spent $4 million training this thing, and now you've got some new updated training data maybe. Maybe you're uh, teaching ChatGPT about things that happened in the last year or something. Um, you could train it a bit more, but you're training 175 billion parameters. Um, those parameters are the weights in, on those on those neurons. And so that takes... Um, it takes a very long time and it costs a lot of money. So um, enter uh, this technique called LoRa, which I believe is, uh, is is pretty recent. I think it's from I think the paper was from February this year. Um, so um, LoRa is a, a very clever way of taking of instead of having to retrain um, uh, all of the weights in the neural network just being able to retrain like a tiny subset of them um, and uh, still managing to get the same uh, quality out of the system um, as uh, as you would if you were to retrain all of them. I won't go into all of the details of how it works, but but the key idea here is that um, you can uh, you can train this uh, delta W, um, which is a a reparameterization, re uh, or you can reparameterize it as A times B, where A and B are these matrices that are from much smaller ranks. That is, they're much smaller matrices than um, the matrix that makes up the whole of W, which is the weights of, of the neural network. So um, this is really, really cool because it makes something that would take hundreds of GPUs and many days or weeks um, and make it much and make it 10,000 times more efficient. And it's not often in computer science that you get a 10,000x speed up. Um, but that's one of these uh, one of these moments. And I think it speaks to kind of how uh, kind of early we are on the AI journey, really, that there are still these huge kind of low hanging fruits to, to be had. So uh, all I'm saying here is that Laura, um makes fine tuning much, much more efficient to the extent that rather than it taking weeks and hundreds of GPUs, I can do it during a meetup talk, hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to read more about, about how that works, uh, then you can uh, check out the, the paper. Uh, I'll put the, um, the slides uh, in, the, um, uh, in the chat later. Uh, or in in Discord probably, but it's this uh, Lora paper from uh, from Microsoft. So um, yeah, coming back to um, to the slides then, while we have the model uh, fine tuning in the background. So so far, the the Lora paper just talked about applying this low rank adaptation technique to um, uh, to large language models. Uh, and in particular, they they use GPT three as an example. Um, but what you but there's a very clever person on the internet <laughs> um, here, a uh, clone of Simo um, Simo Ryu, who um, who applied the um, Lora technique to uh, text to image diffusion models, in particular stable diffusion, and that's really cool because it's taken this technique um, that was applied to text and and made it work with the same um, kind of models that are running um, uh, doing doing text to image and so what you can see here is um, this gif uh, is varying alpha which is this um, 
this merging ratio, which is like, how much of the fine tuned model do you mix in at the point at which you're doing inference? So you can see to begin with, uh, and I believe the, the, the fine tuning here was to make it look more like a drawing, like, um, um, uh, like a sketch. And so as you kind of dial this alpha variable up and down, um, you get something which is very much like a drawing or not very much like a drawing, and you can kind of find the ideal uh, point in the middle. And actually, I've exposed that um, parameter. Good, that's still running. Um, I've exposed that parameter. Oh, no, I haven't. I'm sorry. I thought I had. Um, but I can easily expose that parameter if you're interested in tuning it um, in uh, the code. Um, because it's uh, defined here as coefficient. Um, so let's see. Oh yeah, you actually can tune it. It's just not in the default. So uh, if you change that fine tune weighting variable, um, then you can tune up or down how much um, of that, uh, how much brandness you want in your resulting image based on having fine tuned the model um, on a specific brand, if that makes sense. Okay, um, so. Um, so yes, uh, Simo um, very cleverly applied LoRa uh, or LoRa to stable diffusion, which means that we can now run stable diffusion. Um, we can now do fine tuning of stable diffusion very cleverly. And uh, as an aside, I think it's really interesting how when a model like stable diffusion was made open source, people all over the world flocked to come up with innovations like this and it's a real it's a really exciting example of uh of open source working like we're kind of waiting for large language models to have their stable diffusion moment where the same thing happens for them so uh it's kind of exciting um so anyway that's um that's the clever maths um let's talk a bit about uh about devops and engineering now so um so suppose that you've read the paper, you've got the code, you've got it running, um, and uh, and now you're trying to roll out uh, LoRa on stable diffusion for a real business use case um, inside your organization. Well, um, you'll run into some problems. And um, what I've seen time and time again is that if you just kind of try and start doing it, then you'll you'll end up with like AI engineers just SSHing into a machine that has a GPU, installing some Python libraries and running some scripts. Um, and this can be painful, especially since the Python libraries in, in this ecosystem are evolving really rapidly and often breaking compatibility. Um, and um, so instead of just like manually SSHing into machines, setting up environments um, and running scripts, then um, you should use Dagger to uh, to make this whole process more reliable, reproducible, and cacheable. Um, so, I mean, this is the the Dagger community call, so I'm sure you all know about it already. But the basic idea is that you can easily write pipelines as Python code, um, and that there's a couple of of key benefits that that I found when I was building this demo. The first one was just the benefit of using Docker. Um, which is that I ran into this problem where, like, I I got I cloned the LoRa repo to get started, and I found that the thing was blowing up with this really cryptic message: the size of tensor A must match the size of tensor B at non-singleton dimension two. And I was like, "Oh crap! What am I going to do about this?" So I Google the error message, of course, and I find the GitHub issue. Um, and it turns out that um, someone, uh, when they updated the diffuser library, um broke the uh broke something in the lower library and so the workaround is just like downgrade the diffusers library now this is kind of annoying um and by having a docker file pin down the exact versions of everything at the point at which you build the, the docker image um then you can avoid this happening and then you can uh store the docker image in a registry and and reuse it uh which which solves that problem so um, Dagger makes it easy to use Docker, great. Um, but also the Dagger cache, like I already alluded to when, when I showed you the demo running, it means it, it gives you this much kind of broader benefit, which is that 
um, you can define all of these fine tuning jobs and then inference jobs as parts of a dagger pipeline. Um, and then you can just rerun it when you add new, um, new brands that you want to fine tune on or new prompts that you want to um, add to uh, the set of prompts that, that you're training for each brand. Um, and if you were building this yourself, then you'd have to write like some caching code to make sure that you don't rerun the things that you've already run. Um, but Dagger just does that automatically for you. So I thought that was really powerful. Um, and in particular, I, I had this idea of the, the sort of caching matrix. So suppose you've got the brands along the top and you've got the prompts um, along the left here uh, on, this, on this chart. And you start out with this config file. I showed you the config.yaml file that just says, I want Coke and Pepsi uh, and I want mugs and t-shirts. So um, great. I run it once. It does all of them. It gives you Coke mugs, Pepsi mugs, Coke t-shirts, and Pepsi t-shirts. But then what happens if I come along and I, I want to add my favorite beer um, as a brand? And I can actually recommend this beer. It's very nice. Um, if you then add um, the brand for Beavertown, uh, then Dagger will automatically detect that it needs to build a new Lora, which are these little um, files. I'll show you the files in a second. Um, which which contain just the the difference um, between the initial model weights and the model weights when the model has been fine tuned. So it will create these new lower files uh, for the Beaver Town, and then it will um, go and generate Beaver Town mugs and Beaver Town shirts by doing inference for each of the kind of kind of um, uh, cross product of the brands and um, uh, and the prompts, but um, you didn't have to tell the system, uh, don't go and redo Coke and Pepsi. And the thing, same thing happens when you add new prompts. So now I add, now I decide I want new pens. Um, and the, and then I rerun the script and it will, it won't go and do this slow work of generating the LoRa, even though it's 10,000 times faster than it used to be. It still takes 11 minutes. Um, and it will just quickly go and do the inference for pens, uh, Coke pens, Pepsi pens, and, and Beavertown pens. Um, so that's the idea um, with, with the caching matrix. And this is all just a feature that's built into Dagger and kind of came for free. And I was like, oh, this is really nice to use when I started using it. Um, so let's go and check the demo. Um, I really, really, really hope that it's finished. It is, yes. OK, excellent. Um, <laughs> so uh, what you can see here is that we have this one step of the Dagger pipeline uh, that took 684 seconds. Um, and that generated an output. Um, it generated this LoRa, and it is a magic LoRa because <laughs> it's uh, uh, Magic the Gathering. And what you can see here is that it's um, generated this file called final LoRa.safeTensors. Uh, if I go and load up the terminal, I know I'm nearly over time, um, then uh, you'll see it's just 793 kilobytes, which is pretty cool. Um, and the the weights for um, stable diffusion uh, 1.5 that we're using um, are uh, about eight gigabytes. So it's really cool that you can just you can fine tune um, uh, the model on just uh, teaching it about Magic the Gathering, <laughs> and that it encodes Magic the Gathering in just like 800 kilobytes of data as, as just a diff. The other really cool thing you can do with lowers is you can chain them. So you can say, I want a model that knows about Magic the Gathering and Barack Obama and can put Barack Obama in a Magic the Gathering room or something like that. Like I'm sure you could come up with better examples. Um, but you can, or you could say like, I know I've, I've got a lower that knows about like making things look like pixel art. And then you could do pixel art for all of those things that you just put together. So it's, it's kind of cool. Um, but now let's go and see. So it cached a bunch of the inferences. I'm going to make this go away so I can see. Okay. Yeah. So it cached these inferences. Um, and then the green ticks are for the inferences that it did, uh, on the magic, the gathering stuff. So this is the moment of truth. Will we see the inference outputs for magic, the gathering? Yes. We just asked for mugs. Wow, it worked. 
Okay, that's actually pretty cool. And that was a good a good brand example. Um, well, that's not a mug, but it's got a mug in the background. Um, and yeah, I mean, these are pretty sick. Um, that's quite nice. Okay, um, so while I'm looking through these, I'm gonna do one more thing because it's quick. Um, can anyone suggest in the chat um, another prompt that they would like? So rather than making mugs or t-shirts, um, what would you like? That is Magic the Gathering style because we've got a Magic the Gathering fine-tuned Laura socks. Okay. Um, so card. I don't know what a four byte burger is. A battle axe. Oh, that's quite a good one. Okay. Uh, not that. I need to go to the config file. Okay. So um, I'm going to do socks. Um, uh, socks in the style of. And then this S1, S2 thing is the special token that represents the style of the thing that we've taught it um and i'm gonna say 50 millimeter portrait photography because for some reason that helps hard rim lighting makes things look nice i'm not really a prompt engineer i'm gonna do let's see i'm gonna turn this down to three and we're just gonna get three of each of i'm sorry i know i'm over time i can't help myself battle axe and it's just because we've got so many Good recommendations. Um, okay, we're going to try that. Now we're going to rerun it. Now let's hope the cache works because we definitely don't have time to redo everything. Um, okay, cool. It cached lots of things. And we can go and see what it's doing over here. Okay, it looks like that is doing an inference. Nice. Okay. It's doing some inferences. Oh, oh, you know what? I think we're going to get battle axes for vans pepsi and sri lanka before we get magic um so oh, oh yes <laughs> which is demonstrating the the matrix at work but it's not what i wanted uh so i'm gonna change the config file and rerun it with just magic because i know we're running out of time um but what we can do is we can go and see did we get any uh what was the first one in the list vans pepsi uh Bands. Oh yeah, look, we got a. Oh, that's not a battle axe. That's just a shoe. <laughs> uh, oh well. They're very that's... sharp on the bottom somewhere. Yeah, on the side. <laughs> um, what else was it? No, we didn't get any of those. Okay, I'm going to give it a minute. Um, but hopefully it's going now. Okay, so inside magic. Oh, okay, we've got some socks Ooh. that's actually pretty cool <laughs> okay we got magic the gathering socks um that is not socks i mean it doesn't always get it right hand suck <laughs> and then sometimes it like triggers the not safe for work filter and you just get a black image right. but yeah, like <laughs> unintentionally triggers that filter um cool well i mean i'm gonna say that zeroth set of socks is a win. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead when it comes to this. Um, although that is a battle axe. That is also a battle axe. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to go with the socks. They're the best one. We should add them to our um, online store. Um, so I want to make sure we've got time to talk about GPUs. Um, uh, I was going to do a quick code walkthrough, but I, I don't think I've got time. Basically, just check the code. Um, on bit.ly slash dagger uh, hyphen Laura. Um, and the readme in here tells you how to do everything we looked at today. Um, it's pretty easy to go and get a GPU from Lambda Labs. 
um, and then just a few commands to to run through. Um, and I mean, the code is is pretty self-explanatory. It just reads things out of the config file, um, makes a bunch of directories, downloads stuff, unzips it, and then runs um, a dagger command inside a Docker container um, to do the training. Um, and then again, uh, to do the inference by um, calling this function here. Um, oh, yeah, we, did, we did get one uh, mention there from Miranda Luke about the uh, the store as well. And so folks can see that in chat. Yes. I'm going to click. So it we have also created uh, an online store. Um, which we will populate with even more images. Um, but if you want to buy a, a coffee mug that says coffee up uh, with a sort of intentionally crap AI generated image on it, um, then then please do. Uh, and Solomon wants to know if we should take it live. So um, I think think that's me. I think that's everything I have. Um, thanks very much.